Hi Stampers, it's Super Awesome Stamper Shirley Merker. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Sun Prairie, Wisconsin, USA. I hope I'm in the right spot. If anybody's watching, you can give me a shout out. I'm going to check the one of a kind event. If you are stamping with me today, this is the kit that these are the cards that we'll be making. I see some eyeballs. Yay! All right, now I just have to make sure that I'm in the right spot and can see my feed. Oh, I see myself. Yay! All right, so we'll get started. I am going to flip the camera around because we got a lot of things to do in our video. So you're going to see me flip, and then you're going to see me put my uh, phone on my camera stand. So I'll see you on the other side. Let's see my lovely wall. Oh, you should have covered your eyes if you get a little dizzy. All right, so here is my workstation. Yeah, Kathy had problems finding me. Uh, you have to click on um, recent activity, new activity, recent posts, or go to the media uh, video section. Keep on refreshing. You got to log in and out of Facebook. Facebook is just a fun little platform we got to deal with. All right, hello everybody. Um, I'm just gonna, while well, everybody's logging in, this is, these are the cards that we're making today. And if you're crafting along with me, it would have arrived in an envelope like this, of course, with your address on there and your two ounce postage stamp. So look for this envelope in your crafting kits. And these are the ones that we'll be assembling today. We need to do some scoring and cutting so get your paper trimmer out and we are going to get started. Oop, that's there. That doesn't need to be there. All right, so in your kit, let's just open it up and see what you got. Everybody got a bunch of pattern papers. They all varied in sizes and in patterns and shapes. So just set all those snibbles aside. Those are for you to use wherever you want in future projects. So what's left in your kit would be a strip of Whisper White um, and two pieces of patterned paper, two cello envelopes, and two pieces of cardstock. So let's first get the scoring done. So let me move a few things out of the way. Grab your scoreboard. Now you're only going to need it if you manage to get a batch where I fail to do the second score. So I had to score all the 12 by 12 cardstock. Um, so it would fit in the envelope. But I think I failed to score um, the actual cardstock for you on the 8 inch mark. So you'll need a score on both pieces of your cardstock at 4 inches. That'll be there. And another at 8 inches. So if you got one of those batches that didn't get the second score, go ahead and do that now. All right, so we are going to work with just one card at once. I'm gonna work on the green. Now I'm just using soft sea foam. Y'all got different shades of green as I ran through my stock. You might have gotten the old olive, which is on the sample, okay? Now before we do anything else, we're gonna pull in that Whisper White piece. And that is conveniently sized so that we can create two inside pieces and have a piece of leftover to stamp our floral. All right, um, I'm gonna check my comments here. Um, if there's anything that I need to address real quick. Everybody's just saying hi, so hello back. So grab this piece of Whisper White. We're gonna cut it to three inches and cut another one off at three inches. Oops. These two pieces that we just cut the three inches will be our inside piece on both of the cards, okay? The last piece is for you to stamp your flower. So I'm using the Gorgeous Posies stamp set to stamp the flower. You, of course, needed to um, supply your own ink pad and stamps to stamp your flower. So let's do the stamping first. Um, so grab the piece that is asymmetrical, so it's not a perfect square, and do your stamping. Hi, Susan from British Columbia. Alice from California. All right, Cheryl, you always watch for some make on second view. Okay, 
All right, so what you're gonna do is I want, let me pull this in so you can kind of see how this stamp works. I want a lighter image on the petals and darker for the center. So I've got my Flirty Flamingo ink pad here. I'm gonna stamp off and I'm gonna stamp on my cardstock. And then for the center, I want that full strength. So it adds a little bit of a pop. So I'm done with this ink. And this is Flirty Flamingo is what I was using. And Flirty Flamingo coordinates with this flower right there. Doesn't so much coordinate on that one. You know what, I think I did a little oopsie. Um, if you've got this pattern, this um, color is Petal Pink or Blushing Bride. This one's Rococo Rose. So hopefully you've got an ink color in your stash that coordinates with the pattern paper that you have. All right, so I'm not gonna worry about the fact that I stamped in a color that doesn't perfectly match. Um, this you're gonna set aside to dry if you need it to dry a little bit and then fussy cut around that. So before we work into fussy cutting, let's work into some more cutting here. So if you open up your pattern paper, the stamp that I'm using comes from the gorgeous Posy stamp set. Let me pull that in. It coordinates with, coordinates with one of our kits, so I will show that uh, towards the end of the video which kit it coordinates. All right, so pull in your pattern paper. This I do have scored at four inches, but the scores, we won't really use it because you can see there's three separate quadrants here, so we need to cut our pattern paper down. So go ahead and pull your paper trimmer back. And you're gonna cut three pieces of 3.75 inches each. So I opted to give you four a four by eight inch piece. These little pieces that you're gonna cut off, you can use however you want. Those are just scrap for me right now. And then cut a 3.75 inch piece. And here is the score. So like I mentioned, I had to score that in order to fit it into your envelope. So make sure you're cutting that score section off. So there's one piece. I'm gonna work with this way. So then you're making three pieces of 3.75. If you have a score mark, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you cut that off at some point. There's a score mark. There's a score mark there. I'm not sure if I did the double score for everybody. Hi, Wendy from Virginia. Wendy, I hope you, you got your kid out. All right, and you're, you're um, crafting along with me. Okay, so I'm gonna lay these out so you can see exactly what's gonna go on here. So one piece will be in the center with your white over it. The other two um, squares will be cut uh, for the flaps. So those, since the patterns are asymmetrical, you can cut cut whichever di on whichever diagonal you want. So in doing cards like this, make it easy for yourself and pick, pick a pattern that's asymmetrical so you don't have to worry quite so much about following or matching up a print. So just cut both of those at a diagonal. The bait, yep, yeah, um, Barb, G, yep, let me go through the measurements again. So your, your cardstock is cut four inches by 12. I scored it at four and you also need to score it at eight inches because this is a square card. And then your pattern paper, you're gonna cut into three pieces of 3.75 by 3.75. Those wind up there. And then the ones we just cut will wind up on the flaps. All right, is everybody caught up to speed? Now, let's go back to our card base. So we've got our fold in like this, but you can see I did not do the diagonal folding. So you're gonna bring back in your scoring tool Whatever kind of scoring tool you use. Oh, my flap just kind of opened up there. So here, here's our scoring board and there's this flap. 
that opens and that's where I leave my extra markers. All right, and my stylus went a flying. Let me see if I can find my stylus. There, oh, it's right where the stylus was right where I always leave it, which is the handy storing right there. All right, we are back to um, your, your cardstock. All right, so we want a diagonal from here to here, and obviously our scoreboard's got straight lines. So what you're gonna do is, I use my four and a quarter line a lot. So I know it's grooved right here. What you can do is run your stylus in your four and a quarter or whichever groove you're gonna use. Line up the bottom point in that groove. I'm not removing my stylus from the scoreboard so I can see where I need to position that point. And then position the score top, where it's scored up here by my fingers, into that groove at four and a quarter. And I'm kind of looking at my stylus, my marker up there to make sure I've got it in the right groove. All right, now I'm going to lift my stylus up. Right there, right? Yep. And I pick the small end of the stylus and press down. And that should be our score this way. Everybody got that? We got another shh. We got another chance here to get this. So we got to score the right side now. So this side folds in like that. This side, the score comes up from the bottom up to the upper right. Okay. So from the bottom to the upper right. So I'm going to kind of just do an opposite thing here. I'm going to tuck the corner into my four and a quarter. And you know, I, since I score so much, I score everybody's cardstock, I've got my groove and I can kind of see it on my computer. I know this is my four and a quarter groove, but if you don't have a groove already set in your groove, just put your stylus at the top, wherever you've got your marker, pull it down. Don't move your stylus. Just leave it in your groove. Line up your corner where your marker is. Pull this up. This is where my score is down here. Okay, and I'm gonna lift up and I'm gonna drag down. All right, did everybody get that? Can I see any thumbs up? And now, you see the mechanism for this card. Use your bone folder and crisp up that score. You might want to crisp up the straight ones too, just so it lays a little flatter while we're assembling. All right, does anybody need me to go over that? Did you get that? You gotta figure out your scoring system to make that diagonal score mark on both sides. And if you're watching from home and doing your own thing, then um, Catherine, my segment started at, at 10, 15 central time, so I've been going close to 15 minutes. So you might just want to watch uh, the rest of the video and then pick me up on replay to see how I did all the cutting and the scoring. Okay, so now I am done with the scoreboard. All right, so let's pull in our rest of our floral supplies. Let me find my floral supplies. It's this packet right here with your butterfly embellishments and the champagne rhinestones. And again, you've got coordinating embellishments to that coordinate with the color of your pattern paper. So most everybody got this pattern paper, but I had to switch to this uh, towards the end. All right, so let's get to assembling here. Loretta, thank you. Um, yeah, this is just a bright, colorful card. Now, since this is patterned on both sides, you can decide which pattern you want up. If you want the ivy up or the leaves up, that's up to you. I like the floral up. Maybe because I'm stuck in winter here. I'm in from Wisconsin, so it's at least it's the sun is shining today. Um, 
got that going for us. All right, so now open up your card. Open up my sample card. See, I alternated the pattern. So I put one pattern here. Look at your patterns and see which ones you want up. I want kind of, oh, I like this one up. Um, and one pattern here. And then this is just gonna be the leaves that go there and there. And so I like the alternating pattern here, which coordinates with the center and pattern down to the bottom. Okay, so just grab your tape runner and start assembling. Uh, green glue works great for this too, because the green glue, the tumble liquid glue, gives you a few seconds to move everything around. So I'm just going to be assembling one on camera for you. Um, you can go back on replay, but now that you've went through one card, you should be able to cut up the rest of the cardstock uh, for the second kit. We'll see how I do on time here. And I'm peeking up my comments here. Yes, Claudia, good use of scraps. Now, I mentioned that. I did not cut the pattern paper to the 3.75 that you needed because I did not want those little strips of scraps in my stamp room because I have a hard time getting rid of scraps. So I mentioned you have this little piece right here. You could certainly put something right there and put it up there. Um, if you're doing that, I probably would recommend that you do that before you cut it down, put, uh, tape it down so you can custom cut it off. Let's see if I can do that right now. How about, that looks good. That looks good. What about, we want contrasting colors here. How about I put this this way? Oh. So I know a lot of you are out there like me that don't wanna uh, add your scrap pile or you want to make the most of your supplies. Since this is so thin, I would probably just grab my liquid glue. There's a lot right there that's gonna squish out on me. So don't be afraid to use your scraps. Even though you cut a tiny piece off, this was just a quarter of an inch, it can add so much to your designs. There, you can see I'm a little bit off. This might drive me a tiny bit crazy. I'm gonna hold this up. It's hanging off there. But my paper snips is super sharp. There we go. Look at that, look how much that adds just to that design doing that. All right, now you're gonna pull in your square here. So it's just that three by three inch square. That's for your sentiment. All right, and now let's dig into your supply kit. So you notice I did not include a Whisper White uh, envelope, and that's because these are gonna be a little difficult to mail. But if you decide to, they're gonna be difficult to mail because they're square. Um, they're a little bit bumpy, so I'd recommend reusing your cello bag. Since this has this pull strip adhesive, you can make a custom envelope with the cello bag. So that's why I include this, included the cello bags in this design. All right, so let's flip this shut and tape that, stick that down. Let's see, where is it? There we go. All right. Um, you've got a couple of concentric stitch circles. Those are from the stitched framelits or, um, die set. You're only gonna wanna put adhesive on just one part of that circle because if you put it on the whole circle, you're gonna tape your card shut. You don't wanna do that. Uh, this top circle though, you can certainly put as much adhesive, adhesive, adhesive as you would like on that, all right? Now next would be fussy cutting your flower. I'm not gonna do that. So you're gonna fussy cut your flower and put it on the center. But what I will do is add your self-adhesive rhinestones. So there are three little center pieces on this flower stamp 
So I included three little rhinestones. Okay, so that would go over your circles. And then you also got two of our self-adhesive butterflies in coordinating colors. These are the in colors and I just placed them over that center, the inside circle, so they would stand out. All right, last uh, would be the ribbon. So in my sample, most of you got this gingham ribbon, the bumblebee gingham, but it, and it coordinates perfectly with that pattern, but not with this pattern. So people that got this blue pattern, the navy pattern, you've got this uh, narrower ribbon. So what you wanna do to get a perfect um, bow is kind of hang off the tail and then just start wrapping. So you people with the gingham ribbon, it, yours would just wrap around once. The people that got the narrower, narrower blue ribbon, I gave you a, a longer length so you could do a couple of wraps. There we go. And if I had a pre-cut, here, let's just do it. This is gonna, let's just do it. Fussy cut around this one. I can talk about other things while I'm fussy cutting. So like I mentioned, I'm not gonna do the, um, the snowflake one. I'll just talk about the snowflake one while I am fussy cutting here. So it's the same kind of measurements. You cut down your pattern paper to 3.75 inches. Uh, three pieces of that, and then two of them you cut at a diagonal. One of the P Whisper Whites is attached to the inside. And then I gave you a whole mess of the blue faceted gems and the snowflake adhesives uh, embellishments. Those were in our fall catalog. They are no longer available. So everybody got who got this kit feel lucky because i only have three kits left for sale and after that they're gone so if you like this kit and want a kit just get send me a pm or go to my blog at superawesomestamper.com and this kit is still for sale um through the one of a con icon on my blog all right so that doesn't perfectly coordinate. You know I'm going to have to restamp that in Blushing Bride and get that flower right, but that's how that one would look. And then that's the sample. All right, is there anything else you need to go through with the snowflake card? Um, here is your snowflake kit. The only thing that you need to stamp would be your tag. So that tag comes from the, you know, I always forget this name of this die cut set. It goes, it coordinates with the In Good Taste suite. It is a Tasteful Labels dies, and here are the rest of the dies that come in this set. So I use this die this time. And I am pulling in the stamp from Heal Your Heart, which is a celebration item. See if I can get this straight. I didn't do a tester. Oh, not quite straight. You got two sides. There, that looks really good. All right, and then snowflakes. So in my sample, oh, I put picked in the we're in, in this together. There's also thank you in this stamp set. Here's this stamp set. I was just looking for the cursive T when I modded my stamps. All right, and then we've got some snowflakes. So snowflakes are from a retired set. Again, it was only in the fall catalog. But these little fun snowflakes are from the Snowman Season stamp. Oh, and I got ink on my finger there. So that is the only stamping that you would do on this kit. I'm going to pull this up to the camera and talk about a few more things while I'm doing that. So since you're probably gonna hand deliver this card, I would suggest that this piece, if you don't wanna glue it down, put some dimensionals on the back. Make it as thick as you want. And then all of your blue faceted gems, I put on the corners. I think there was 10 in total. So two on the opposite corners, and then two or one on there, and then four on your Blackberry Bliss square that I included in your kit. 
And then this was wrapped around with uh, some of your polka dot, the white polka dot ribbon, which is a netting. Just wraps around like that. So if you tuck it in your card, I actually will probably would tuck it in this way so I don't have to fight with the bows. Oh, you know what? I should have rehearsed that. I didn't think about that. This one might be a little harder to tuck in because this ribbon, well, I've stretched out my ribbon so much. So when you tie yours, yours is going to be a little bit tighter. It'll be e a little easier to slip into the cello bag is what I'm saying uh, with your um, card. All right, so let me go through a few more things. Somebody asked about, here was a stamp set that I used um, for the first card for the flower and then for the snowflake card get some of the stuff out of the way I use the snowman season stamp set so the little snowman right there and then the celebration freebie was this heal your heart so what celebration is I'm going to show you this brochure you can download this brochure uh, on my website uh, trinket troy yep you have to add extra postage for these square cards. Um, you can hide them in a regular envelope, but you have to make sure that it doesn't bend. So you're gonna have to add additional um, backer sheets, but these cards are so thick, they're gonna require extra postage anyway. So I would recommend hand delivering that. All right, celebration brochure you can download from my website, but I'm gonna show you with every $50 purchase, excluding shipping and tax, you can earn this Heal Your Heart stamp set for free. That's the one I used today. Here's the pattern paper that I used, one of the patterns, the flower and field. Again, every $50 earns you a free item. And then, oh, paper blooms is way in the front. So here is the pattern that I use in some of the kits as well. So again, download that brochure on my website. And go ahead and use my host code today. Um, let me pull that up here. Here's my show special. If you place a $50 order using this host code, which again is listed on my blog at superawesomestamper.com, so you don't have to write anything down, just go to my blog and all this information will be there. Um, if you use this host code, you'll actually receive a PDF tutorial of 16 projects in addition to the free um, exclusive celebration item. All right, um, you can PM me with any questions on that. A couple more things that I wanted to go through before I sign off. I do have a Sweet of the Month program. And the sweet for this month is the Snailed It Sweet. So if you purchased the Snailed It Sweet, you would have received these make and take kits in your mailbox. Oop, my ribbon, my, my bow got untied there. And then we would meet on Zoom to um, assemble these kits. And then I also have YouTube links to go with assembling these kits. And then a bonus for my suite of the month is that um, I'm going to include 10 more, at least 10 more YouTube videos of other demonstrations is using that suite of the month. All right, uh, what else do I need to go through here? Um, oh, and here's that little gift note. Um, I was going to go through a little mini catalog tour of the products that I used, but I think I'm running out of time. Uh, download my catalog at my blog, superawesomestamper.com, um, to see what's available. Um, we've got close to 200 pages full of goodies that you can order and reach my show special minimum. Um, I'm going to point you to my blog because there are a couple other things on my blog. I am hosting a fundraiser for breast cancer recovery. So if you go to my blog and look for the logo on the right side of my blog, click there, there will be the information for the Bouquet of Hope fundraiser. Um, you order the paper pumpkin kit by February 10th, and then we meet on Zoom to assemble the kit. So that's a fundraiser for breast cancer recovery. I also have the Sugar Cookie Socials, um, which is again, we meet on Zoom to assemble some kits that I mail to you. And the Sugar Cookie Social uh, Zooms are on the fourth Wednesday of the month. Um, last, you're going to get a sneak peek in my last 30 seconds of the kits for next month. So go to my blog, again, at superawesomestamper.com. This blog post is up. You can see all the ordering details and what's included in the kit. 
All right, thanks for watching and have a super awesome day and we'll stamp with you soon. Yes, Michelle, we do carry the butterfly embellishments um, and I'll catch up with you in a minute. Bye.